All right, hey everybody. So <clears throat> I've got the uh, the upper wing right panel uh, structure pinned. I've got the leading edge, the two um, stringers, uh, spars, I guess you'd call them, and the trailing edge. So what I did was it, the plan didn't call for it, but I just duplicated one of these uh, W1 uh, ribs. Uh, just traced it out onto a sheet of 16th material and cut it out and, and just attached right to the edge, uh, you know, the face of the uh, of the center section I built up. And that gives me a place to root um, these parts of the structure. The, um, the two spars slide in under here, uh, the leading edge just into that niche there, and then the trailing edge underneath the... Uh, uh, underneath the cutout at the back here, cut out there. You see, so that everything was, has somewhere to go, um, and that gives it a little bit more structure and strength here at the uh, where the wing panel is going to attach to the center section. So I just wanted to go over that, and then <clears throat> so this is how uh, I would do the the standard uh, typical wing construction. Uh, you pin down the parts that are pinned, uh, you get your wing ribs all ready, uh, you want to stack sand them, you want them all uniform. So now here the tail end doesn't really matter because some of this is going to be trimmed off in, in sanding and shaping. But you do want um, you do want them to be consistent in shape and that's that's really where stack sanding comes in. And it's just, it, it, it is what it is. You stack them and then you sand them uh, so that you get a uniform uh, shape along the top and bottom. And you do that with all of them together. Um, so what I would do is there's 10 of these. You would take them and uh, you don't necessarily do all 10. You might do five at a time. Uh, first one set of five, then the other set of five. And then I would probably mix them and then do it again. Kind of shuffle them like cards and then do it again just just so that you get some consistency across across the uh, you know this the, the ribs so they're all uniform and that way you don't get the undulations you know this one's high this one's low this one's high this one's high and next one's low and that kind of thing and, and then your wing looks like a roller coaster all right so anyway you get you get the first one in there um, slide the square all the way over and I'm, I'm sorry I've got a kind of a bad angle for this but you can trust me we're going to line this up for square make sure we're on the mark and we'll probably hold it against there right keep everything right where we want it and then just hit it with a dot of glue at every joint typically I'll just do four and aft first pin the front and the back. No, not too much adhesive, it doesn't need to be swimming. Also I don't want a big dollop back in here when I go to uh, lay in the tail, the trailing edge sections of the uh, infill. So when you come in here with these pieces, if there's a ton of glue line, you know, piled up in here, um, then you end up with some unevenness on the back edge here, so you don't want that either. And I use my fingers all the time. I mean, it, it's super glue. It's not going to kill you. It gets on your fingers, sticks, sticks your fingers, builds up. Some guitarists use it on their callus stand. They'll, they'll use super glue on their on their calluses. You know, and and um, and that gives the that gives them a little extra playing time. All right, uh, guitar picker tips and tricks. So you get that thing in there, you got it square against your your square and, uh, and just tack it and then come back with the adhesive and you want to hit it on both sides at each spar. And you want to make sure that the, the rib is all the way down against your plan. And the reason again for that is if it's sitting up high on one or the other of these spars you're gonna, and, you, and you're consistently, you know, incorrect all the way down. Like you're going to end up again with that warbling, that uh, that roller coaster wing. So 
So this is all we do, and we just go down the line. You uh, <coughs> insert this behind the uh, leading edge first, get a little bit of an angle there, and it should fit. And if it doesn't, uh, here we go. You might need to trim a little bit off the back of the uh, leading edge connection or a little bit around the uh, spar. You might have to take that up and uh, just make these openings a little bit larger. In other words, if that hadn't gone on there, I might have opened this up. And I might have opened these up just a hair, just, you know, a 32nd of an inch with the blade, just, just made them bigger until we had a good, you know, fit. We want it, we want it tight. It can, it can be loose. It's better if it's loose than too tight. Too loose just means that the glue is going to be filling a bit more too tight and it could crack or it, the tight, it, it could prevent it from you from reaching a a 90 degree angle, you know, perpendicularity, <laughs> or, um, you know, if it's too tight, it, it just throws out, it could throw off the alignment and, and just, yeah, and cause a problem, so you don't want that either, so, all right, and then we just go down the line. Anyway, I thought I'd just show you quickly how I, I lay up these wings, um, how I do it, you know, what you do could be different, um, just this one way or the other, it'll get in there. Um, but I found this this is this is what works for me. And you typically, you just start at one end or the other, whichever whichever end you have access to, or whichever you know for your square. And you don't have to use a great big square like what I've got here. Sometimes if it's too big, some aircraft models are smaller. Some uh, I think this is going to be a binding, so we're going to take this out and trim it. Um, you know, you just don't have room for something like this. You can just make one using it, you know, using that as a template. All right, come out of there. Uh, use it as a template and just make one out of uh, scrap balsa or cardstock or whatever you want. Just um, what you want to do is just make sure whatever you're using is a 90 degree angle. It's, it's a square so that your ribs are, um, you know, true. All right, this should pop in here now. It's funny that it didn't go. That's just the way it is sometimes. It still doesn't want to go. I think I trimmed the wrong edge. All right, there we go. I think that's got it. All right, we're, we're in there. We got it. Okay, so check it with the square. Again, make sure you're on the mark on the plan, that is, you have the rib located in the correct spot. And it's time for a new blue bottle. And there we go. Gotta get down there. I was trying to sit up high. Okay, uh, I think that's tight. And down we go. Just make sure we get it glued on there. Yeah, I gotta open up a new bottle. This one's yeah, this one's shot. There's another thing I do. I don't put much glue in these, so I always do a transfer. You don't want to do this if you've had, you know, a bottle sitting around for a long time. But something like this, I've had this for a week, just burning through it. So the caps, the the tips get messy and they create more problems than they're worth. I do this sometimes as often just to get a a better applicator than I do because I'm running out of glue. And when that happens, I just uh, pour the residual into the new bottle, and away we go. There's always plenty of room in these. Like I said, they they sell them they sell them to you with about you know this much. You know they call that full. Uh, 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 anyway, start going on the tangent here. All right, so we're square. We'll get a next one, and we'll go, and we'll go, and we'll go, and we'll go, and we'll go. And we'll go. All right, that's how we do it. Yes, sir.